Welcome to Smosh Mouth. I'm Shane. And I'm Amanda. And uh, today we have a very special guest, Nobody. Nobody. Uh, Welcome back to, it's been a minute since we've done one, just you and I. I know. I miss it. I miss us. Yeah. Same. (laughs) You always have like Spencer, some asshole here here to- Such an asshole. Putting his drinks on the table and we're not allowed to. Such a douchebag. Yeah. Um, That is just us again. Dude, before- we started this, you were telling me about your nightmares lately. Yeah. That was wild. Yeah. I. It's funny because I don't often talk about that, but I grew up having night terrors, mm-hmm. and I sleepwalk, and I sleep talk. How often do you sleepwalk now? Um, honestly, it's been a minute, um, and I haven't actually had a night terror in a minute. Like, I've actually By been, in a minute, do you mean like a year? I like mean a... like months. Okay. Yeah, I would say like six or seven months. Oh, that's good. Um, I haven't had one in a while, but lately, and I would say it's more sleep talking now than sleepwalking. When I was a kid, I used to sleepwalk a lot. Mm. Oh, like in other, like out on the street. Whoa. Like not bueno. Holy shit. Yeah, my mom's like, you're sick. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what to do about this. You're sick. And I was like, huh? Oh my God. Um, So I don't sleepwalk as much, I think because I'm scared. I'm more scared. Oh, so you're staying still. So I'm staying very still. Yeah. I learned what I would do if I got really scared, and it would be um, still, like stiff as a board. That's a, that's a normal response. But I do talk a lot. But this week, I have had some really bad night terrors, and usually they are the same person, and it feels like I'm getting haunted, and it goes. And I've I've talked to a therapist about it. I've talked to a medium about it. Whoa. And I've learned how to kind of shut it down. Yeah. Uh, Have you felt like you've shut it down? Not this one. Whoa. It like came back so intensely this week. Because um, I was telling you that because I have crazy energy right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, I don't know what's going on, but my husband reminds me. Because I'll wake up and sometimes forget that it <clears throat> even happened. Because I'm sleeping. Yeah. I'm sleeping, but then I wake up a little bit. Or at least I think I'm awake, but I'm pretty positive I'm sleeping the whole time. But I'm sitting up and talking. You're sitting up. I'm sitting up and talking to a person. That's your your husband is so like he's a saint, unafraid of stuff. Because if if I woke up in the middle of the night and, and Courtney was sitting up <laughs> talking, I would be terrified. No, no, he he's a saint. I did do this with one of my friends, and she cannot stop telling this story. She's like. I'm never sleeping next to Amanda again. Aww. I woke up and I was like, blah, 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 like <laughs> shaking my hand and being like, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And she was like, bitch, I'm not sleeping next to you again. Oh my God. Yeah, my husband's a, a saint. And what's what's great is now he knows what's going on. So he'll be like, all right, where is she? <laughs> where is she? And then he goes and hits the air. <laughs> He's like, took care of her. Usually it's like my closet. So we actually moved our bed (laughs) so I couldn't look directly into my closet. Wow. But so now it's on the side, but still, so, so if I shut the door, fine, it's, it's okay. But if I somehow leave the door cracked, you wake up. There's always. Are you sitting up with your eyes open? Yes. Wow. Yes. I guess that makes sense. I know. Fully eyes open. People sleepwalk, they have to have their eyes open. I, but I, that concept is so wild to me of like. I know. And I think I think <clears throat> when I was younger, I never wanted to talk about it because I was like, this is going to freak people out. So I didn't. I just mm-hmm. like, it was just a thing that my mom was like, all right, we're not going to talk about this. I don't think it's super uncommon though. Like, But I don't, like I see Instagram videos where people are like sleepwalking and having a whole thing where they're going in the fridge or whatever, right. eating and like, that does not happen to me. You just walk around and talk. I walk around and talk, but mainly it's because someone is telling me to like come in the other room or something. Interesting. And this one specifically, she's like a little bit younger. She's wearing red. I don't know. Like a red dress? Like a red dress kind of. And she doesn't have like a hood on. She doesn't look like a sci-fi creature. Yeah. What's I think what's scary is they look like normal people in my house. That is that is very I get why that's scary. It's really, really scary. And and she was in the closet like staring at me. 
And they're always kind of calling me in, like calling me into the oh. closet or calling me into the living room because I can oh. see the living room through my bedroom. Interesting. Or there, the other night she was like building something in front of me. Building just something. I don't know, but I told apparently I told H like, oh, she's trying to impress me right now. She's trying to impress me? Yeah. Weird. A medium told me, and I'm very glad I double checked with a therapist, a medium told me to like open up the door. She was like, you should open up this door. You should you should open up this door and you should ask them what they want and blah, blah, blah. And I did, I did once. I was like, okay, I'll open up this door. This was like four years ago. Big mistake. What happened Huge when you mistake. opened the door? I opened up the door and then four people showed up the next night all like crying and asking for my help. And then they started like putting things on the wall that was like coming towards me. It was really bad. Also mirrors. I told you this. Mirrors. Yeah, are you told me about up. the mirrors. <laughs> huh. That's people are gonna be like, who is Amanda? That's the other thing, is like, I think a lot of people think they know me, but there's so many aspects of me that I don't talk about. Yeah. But this one, I'm I'm trying to be open about it because I'm trying <clears throat> to like find solutions. And then so you did you, you talk to the therapist and the therapist was like, do not open that door. The therapist was do not open that door. Huh. Do not open that door. Because when I did I would wake up exhausted every day. Like like it was like I was getting energy. And then you're going to laugh at me, but I got my astrology reading. I'm not going to laugh at it. I don't I, don't, I you know. But I was it was very helpful. Apparently there's some there's some things in my chart that I was like, "Huh?" She was like, the woman looked at it, she was like, "Uh, are you very connected with like death?" And I was like, "Yes, I am." Um, like I've lost a lot of people in my life. But in my chart, apparently Neptune, which is dreams, is in is in the chart with um, the underworld and death and my mother. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. I don't know what it is about older women. I know I'm not the only one about this, but my mother's always like, did you hear someone died again? And I'm like, yes. Okay, mom. She's been like that since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's connected to the night terrors or if it's anxiety or if I actually sh have an open connection. But, but the therapist was like, shut that door. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't think anything's silly when you're talking about something like going on internally, like introspection, like whatever whatever matters to you yeah. does matter. in Because this is your own internal, eh, look, I'm not saying ghosts aren't real, that this may not be a haunting, whatever. But I also think that whatever's going on is also an internal thing. And in your own internal world, what matters to you does matter in that world. Yeah. So anything that you're, that's why, like, frankly, like placebo effect stuff works really, really well. Cause it's like, yes, cause it's, you're believing it. And in your world, that's gonna affect you. I'm not saying that's the case here. But I also would say, like, just on a very surface level of, of, you telling me about this, like you are a very empathetic and giving person. I feel like you are someone who gives too much to people probably yeah, a lot. Yeah, and so probably. I think that's why the therapist was like probably opening it up of like, this is probably like guilt and feeling of like, you need to give a bunch to people. So it might be connected yes. to your mom. It might be connected to just the world in general, your own emotions, your own past, your own like feelings towards things of just like, don't open that door. Cause that's, that's something inside of you telling you need to give you need to give this. It's like no, yeah. not opening that that door is that boundary, and you're not setting those boundaries for yourself internally. Yeah, like maybe I think I think you're exactly right, and I think what's tricky is that like I I think a lot of people have lost people, but mine come in my dreams a lot mm -hmm. to talk to me. Yeah, and. I've, I've been visited by a lot of them a lot and they always have something to say. They're always saying, I'm sorry, or I wanna talk, or I miss you, or I'm so happy for you, or they always have something to say and it's full conversations. And you know, it's, it's very upsetting to wake up with that, but those I've worked out. Those I'm like, oh, those are mirrors to me. So those are actually my, my sadness and my guilt and what I haven't let go and I haven't forgiven myself maybe something with a relationship. Mm -hmm. And and when I start to actually work on that, they they stop visiting me. Wow. But the other things, the hauntings, are real people that I've never seen in my life that are coming, 
and they're either like tricky. They like they yeah. want something out of me. They want me to like go with them somewhere. They want to show me something or they're crying and they want help from me. And a person was like that could be people who have moved on, who are like visiting your room cuz you've opened up the door kind of mentally. Yeah. And they they're coming to you for comfort. And so when you open up the door, you get exhausted. Trust me, I've like researched this and gone over it. But but sometimes I'll be visited by something that I'm just like, that's too scary, bro. Like, totally. no. Do you do you ever tell them in your dreams like, no, like that lady in red shows up I, and you're I, just like, hey, fuck off. Uh, <laughs> I don't say fuck off because Shane in the moment. Well, it's so scary. It's so scary. Yeah. I, I, I'm not able... I'm telling you this. I, I've never in my dreams had the ability to control my dreams. So I no, would sit there and just watch. I do wake up H, usually, or he wakes up because I'm having a full conversation with nobody or somebody. And he's like, just tell her to go back in the closet. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm, like I'm trying. And he's like, just tell... Hey. Just go. Hey, you got to go back in the closet. And then That's he'll so And then he'll get up and he'll check the closet and be like, no one's there. And then he'll shut the door and he'll go... Go back to bed. And he's never upset. He's never mad at me. He like fully is invested that this is just a part of my life. He's so like just uh, because even I as a skeptic, it's still if I woke up and someone was like, yeah, I don't know. There's a ghost. I saw someone in that closet. I'd be like, that's cool. (laughs) So (laughs) to get up and go, I'm going to go check that closet. I I think it would think if it was like. Courtney or someone you've been living with forever. You, you have to do. I think it, in the beginning he was like, "What the fuck?" Probably, but after a minute, after after a minute, you you go, "Okay." You get you get used to it. If yeah. that if that happened to me in bed and someone woke up and went, "There's someone in the closet," I would be yeah. like, "Get the fuck away from me." Yeah, and I mean, look, even if it is, I, I look if if ghosts are real, I do think like the way that they would do everything is emotionally, you know, like, I don't know if I necessarily believe when it gets to the point of like, yes, this goes physically did stuff. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Cause I think like, yeah, I've never but, felt like, but it's, it's kind of, to me, it feels like either way, whether it's ghosts or not, it's the same thing of like, you don't owe this and you know, but, yeah. but internal, like, it's kind of like whether it's ghosts or not, it's like it's the same deal. Like people deal with internal demons the same way and it's just this yeah. stuff. Or people who are alive, you've got that same pull and, and to- Of course, there's it's... there's walking demons everywhere. Yeah. And, and I will say, I feel like I can sense an energy. Sometimes they're not always demons. And I have met older people, you know when you're like walking down the street and maybe this just happens to me, but like I have met older people that'll be like, hey, do you have nightmares? Like people will be like, hey. Just randomly? Have you ever done medium stuff? Just randomly. And I'm like, no. And my sister's a hypnotherapist. She's taking a break from it now, but she had a business for a while. And she's always like been like, dude, what you can connect with is crazy. Do all all of your sisters have this same type of stuff? No, not at all. Uh, My little sister has like the the appreciation for it and the study for it, but I'm the only one that has ever had like the night terrors or the nightmares. And no, nobody else in your family? No one else in my family, but we do have like a weird kindred thing where I will feel physically like hurt or sick or like have a headache. And usually I'll text a sister and something bad is happening. Apparently my, um, apparently my mom said my grandma had like, she was like, "Oh yeah, there's stuff there." Um, what? And appar- apparently, when my mom was giving birth to one of my brothers, my grandma just immediately knew from states away. It was just like, what? "Oh, I think she's probably yeah." That's and there was cool. some stuff. There was some stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard you but... say that. Talk about that. Uh, I don't. I'll maybe. I'll maybe think of it and talk about it later. But there was some stuff with um, her and my mom stories of. Uh, Having dreams and things happening, and then really? and then you know the whole story. I think I've I've told this where when I drowned in the pool, my mom heard a voice, and then that's what drove her to go check on me. Oh my god! Um, you told me a story a long time ago. I yeah, think. yeah. That's so. They were they were in the opposite side of the house, and I was supposed to be behind a baby gate, but I got out and got in the pool, and then in, like in the middle of a conversation or something, my mom said she just heard like a man's voice <gasps> say my name, and she was like, 
and she like ran found See, one. I believe in that. I believe in a mother daughter crazy mm-hmm. kinetic connection. And I believe it was sisters too. Like there's something there. I don't yeah. know if it's like quantum physics or some crazy connection. Look, I I yeah, the the thing that happened happened. I I believe her. Um so I don't know, but but it's it's wild stuff. I think the I also think, yeah, there's probably a lot like the human mind, there's just an endless amount of stuff. Yeah, and I think that's why people want to believe in something and, and give it a name. Whereas, totally. you know, because they're like, but I do think the universe is just like wild and there's crazy things that happen in, and synchronicities and... Oh, yeah, I mean... I just don't know well, why sure. I have night terror. That really sucks. I was telling you that <laughs> I I rarely dream, like very rarely. I can see that. You just knock out and I truly, fall I truly... I, and the reality is I don't remember my dreams, right? Because we all dream, you we just dream. don't remember them. Uh, I just rarely remember mine. Most of mine make zero sense. They're always, I'm always in like a combo of two places I've lived in Uh, where I like turn it, it's an apartment I lived in at one point and then I turn it's like my grandparents' house and it's kind of a combo of them. And then like, it's always like, it's more like a sequence of several small little dreams that none of them make sense. mm -hmm. It's almost like kind of like a stream of consciousness. Like you're sitting there just thinking and you're bored. It's kind of like that. Yep. Um, and the only nightmares I ever have are never like, I'm scared for my life. I'm scared. It's always like, oh, shit, I fucked up. Or like, oh, I'm guilty. Or like, yeah. oh, I I did something wrong. And now I got to like, that's always the ones where I wake up and I'm like, oh, thank God. That was yeah. a dream. Oh, I thought I was going to have to have this hard conversation and that's admit deep, that I. That's your like. Fear. Oh, yeah. I'm such a guilty person. I deep down is just like, yep, like. Everything I do is could be wrong, so like don't. You know. I so badly want to dig into that and dig that up, but I won't. It, I, Only I, if you want. I, 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 we could talk about it sometime. I, I've, un- I think I know most of it at this point, or I know where a lot of it comes from. Interesting. But I'm just a guilty person. Yeah, I get, I get that, and I think for me, I, I think I have a lot of fear that I just push through a lot, yeah. and maybe at night my brain's like. Hey, you didn't let this out during the day as much. Right. So here it is. But my sister always thinks it's because I watch too many horror movies. But the well, thing is, yes, yes and no. Okay. No, and I this sounds a lot different. of crime. This actually feels like something connected to something else. Because you watch a bunch of true crime, but that would then be like scary men. That would be like men coming and like, you know, house, you know. Yeah. Horror. A serial killer is a different, different type of vibe. Yeah, these than- are like this sounds this sounds creepy. They live in my closet. Yeah, and, it's, and then the mirror thing. I I physically cannot have any mirrors that are antique. And I will say, I have a friend who gets a lot of stuff from an estate sale, and I walked in and felt visibly. I I, I felt physically ill, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't feel good in this house." And uh, I was just walking around. I was like, "Oh, where'd you get this mirror? Or where'd you get this? Or whatever." She's like, "Estate sale. It's probably like five hundred years old." And I'm like. Ooh, ooh, like I, I'm very, I've been affected like that since I was That's a kid. Wild. My aunt lived in this old farmhouse, and I was like, as a kid, I was sick every night. Wow. Like throwing up sick. And my mom was like, oh, she's just homesick, homesick. Like she just wants to be home. And my aunt, who's so cool, was like, there's ghosts here. I was like, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's a nice thing what? to say. She's, you're... No, because she she's she's very cool. You she got was, demons in you, kid. She was like, no, she's Sorry. like, this this farmhouse is haunted. I didn't want to tell you guys that, but it's clear that you can tell. And I was like, okay. I was like seven. Damn. That's a wild thing to say to a seven year old who's like going through. Oh, it. that's just her. That's just her that's vibe. That's wild, man. That's just her vibe. I, Damn. I love her. She's just. She doesn't give a shit what anyone thinks about her. Um, we've talked about, I think this year could be the year where we s- stay the night at this studio. Cause I Can thought, we? I, I've heard, uh, since, since we like joked about that, I've then heard people say that apparently there is a ghost in this studio. What? I thought someone said that, didn't they? I'm looking at Mark. Maybe I'm wrong. Also has I'm the wrong. touch. I mean, look, it's it's L.A. and so like most buildings are old and they're repurposed yeah, yeah, several yeah, times of over. Um, yeah, where we film in Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> um, no, uh, I swear someone was like, "Oh yeah, I thought I saw." Now maybe this is just people trying to s- uh, say. I'm I'm down. Scary. I want to hear it all. But I think it'd be cool to stay the night. And uh, can we? 
I, we have to I, have like flashlights though. Oh, we gotta we gotta get all the stuff. We gotta get all we the stuff. We have to get all the ghost hunters. I'm not, and I get to be the skeptic, and and, and I get to be the you're believer. The medium and, you sure you want to be with me? Yeah, dude. Why not? Okay, I've opened up the door. As long as uh, we'll have your husband stay with us too. <laughs> he's just he's passed out the whole time. He's just while asleep, you and, are, and I'm like, great. He's really helping. And then we tap on the shoulder. We go. There's someone in the corner. He goes. All right, let me go talk to them. Yeah. Real quick. <laughs> Oh God! I'm down. Um, I'd I'd be down. I would do it. Okay. I'd fully do it. Let's just do a podcast overnight here. Yeah, we'll do. We'll record it at midnight here. All the lights off. The we'll see. We'll so see excited. what. We'll see what crew. So uh, this is actually an idea I pitched like two years ago. Yeah. And Kiana, who was in charge of the pitch channel at the time, was like, "No, we we're not doing that because <gasps> I cannot. I can't." And I was like, "Fair enough." Okay, but, um, but now, but now, again. but now, Kiana's been promoted, so she doesn't have to be involved. And uh, <laughs> Kiana's promoted. Kiana, Kiana, Kiana now, Kiana now, far too powerful to have to deal with with our with, ghost adventures. Yeah, with our ghost adventures. Uh, so we would just make Emily or someone. <laughs> oh, Selena will be there. Selena, if we do it on Smosh Mouth, yeah, it could be. It could be us. I think. I think this group that's in this room now would all be down. Yeah, look. At I them. think Brennan. Brennan. Brennan was like. All right, yeah. <laughs> but you know Marcus, but Marcus is also haunted. That's what I'm saying. Mar- <laughs> Marcus we have is people who are haunted. Marcus in here. is haunted for sure. People who are haunted and then me who's just like, "All right, whatever." Marcus has the touch. But I've died, so like What? Yeah, oh, I, you I just died the in story. the pool. I drowned. Yeah. <gasps> so, you're I, a different person. Who ghosts, were you before? Ghosts are like wh- whatever, dude. You're like half ghost. Oh, see, that's why they don't come to you. Whereas I'm, I'm half like ghost. I'm like, "Huh?" That's oh my funny. god. Are you a ghost? That's my joke about astrology is that uh, I'm like, uh, I, I'm not a Virgo because when I died, I are you technically, when you leave the your body for a little bit and come back, are so you? What would you be now? I don't know. I forget when I, I think I, was it summertime? Was it around this time? Oh my God. Is this the anniversary of your death? Maybe. I'm not sure. We should Actually, um, I need celebrate. To, I need to ask the the date. I think I asked my parents once what the date was, and they're like, oh, I don't know. I'm like, you don't remember the date? And your mom's like, I, I died. never <laughs> want to talk about that. Yeah, I also get that. I'm like, it is probably traumatic. But you should. You should do wonder, something special on wonder, the day that you died. I mean, I don't remember it. It's it's a it's it's more of an event for the rest of my family. Watch me have a fucking dream where a person's like, I know Shane's death. I know that idiot, <laughs> that stupid idiot. And I'm like, she's trying to impress me. Here's but... the thing: he was brain dead before. He's brain dead after. <laughs> yeah, that makes. There's sense. There's zero thoughts in there. That makes sense. I go up to, I died, and I went up to heaven for a second. God's like, I guess I'll make you an improviser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> comedian, go. We had actually no plan for you, so uh, <laughs> you're gonna have to br- improvise. Comedian. And then I took that to heart. Head out. Um, well, for people listening, That's boy, funny. we really made your morning. Already, yeah. Sorry, wild. we were just talking about it, and we thought, why not talk about it on the pod? Yeah. Um, but basically, we're just talking about these past few months. We just kind of, and also like the past year of the podcast, because I think it's been around a year. It's it's our one year anniversary, R- roughly. Roughly. Yeah. Um, and also, kind of, the problem is it ties in with the one year of Anthony coming back. It's like around the same time that they Didn't started. We do it a little bit before that. Did we start it right before? Well, so this is the thing. We recorded our very first episode of this, I think, once Anthony did come back. But we we didn't announce that he was back yet. You're right. And so right. it's kind of like, it's kind of around, but like it's wrapped June, in that. June, July is just kind of like a crazy time now. Yeah. That's around the time when. That's crazy, shit Shane. Got crazy last year. It's our one so. year anniversary. I know, man. And it's so really cool. cool. I, I will be completely honest with you. It is doing so much better than I was expecting. Well, we just had no idea. Like we just had no idea, and I didn't have high expectations because we had done Smoshcast before. Yeah, yeah. And Smoshcast before, after a year, we were kind of struggling with it. We were yeah. just like, "What is it? What's the identity of it?" Um, the views were inconsistent. Like we didn't have a strong audience, and it was just like, "What it?" What? And and right. the tone felt all over the place. Whereas this time, it just feels easier. It feels easier. I think because you and I, I don't think we realize that we can talk about so much. It's so funny. Yeah, the other day we were hanging out 
with Courtney oh, and, yeah. and stuff. And something got brought up, and you and I just started riffing about it. And Courtney yeah. was like, okay, I see the whole podcast dynamic. She was like, whoa, I now see it in person that you guys yeah. actually just do it on and off the camera. I guess it's a skill I feel like I've developed. Because I remember when we started the podcast, there was Tommy's roast of... of uh, Shane's hosting the podcast to see if he can hold a regular conversation for an hour. And I thought that roast was so good, but I, it's also something I genuinely felt of like it, uh, conversation is sometimes weird for me. So um, interesting. So I think I've gotten better at conversation. I've never really felt that from you. I've always felt, maybe because I just come in and go, hey, want to listen to this crazy shit that just happened? Yeah. And then we dive in. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Um, maybe you have gotten better at it. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know. Um, but, but things are really good. Um, the audience, like, they like it. Yeah. Our episodes have been really fun. We've done, we've done, we have some kind of thematic episodes. We do try not to laugh. The try not to laugh episodes are really fun. The character episodes are so fun too. Yeah. Well, we only did the one, right? No, we, we've done, we've done our characters and then we've oh. done real life characters. Oh yeah. Talking about characters, but also doing the chosen Sarah Christ episode. Was... So, oh my God. I, Maybe we that, one was, that, that one was like the most, um, love hate episode. There was a lot of people who it was like their favorite episode. And then a lot of people were like, <laughs> I don't know how I feel. About yeah. They're this. like, what are you guys Which I also doing? get. Cause I'm like, you're listening to a podcast yeah. to just kind of listen to his vibe. I, I honestly feel like that episode was Fun, it was, it was, was just a us. fever dream. It was a fever dream. It's crazy to sit and be in a character for an hour and not be like doing some big performance, but just be like talking. Yeah. It's really trippy. It. I would say that that's hard because a lot of the characters is like full body with like a prop or something. Right. right. So to sit I think here I had my phone though. have to just be in your head or just kind of be mellow about it. I have a question for you. Do you find that you can stay in a character longer if you have something in your hand that's theirs? Um, I guess I haven't really thought about that, but a lot of my characters, some of my characters have like props because the Chosen has a sword and he has things and then Dumpster Wizard has his pan flute. So they always kind of have props. But not all of them because Courtney freaking Miller didn't. Um, right. I don't think a lot of them necessarily needed it. I learned, I learned when I was at Groundlings that my director called it out. She was like, you do so much better. You connect immediately when you have a prop in your hand that's theirs. Huh. And I was like, "So that's I the cigarette do? for Sarah." Yeah, Collins. and then I and then I realized it's true. It's that's a cigarette. Sense. Something you can focus on. Something that you can focus on that is theirs that can, you know, like when you kind of switch into an accent, you need that one word to like go into. Sure, sure. Like right, <laughs> right, right. Um, it's kind of like that. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. But I love, I loved that episode so much. Yeah. What was your favorite episode that we've done? Favorite episode we've ever done? Oof. Um, uh, honestly, there was that episode with Olivia where, what were we talking about? Reddit stories? Um, yes, the weird subreddits, the first one, was really fun and just a weird vibe in like a good, so good, good way. I will say the episode that I... You know this. The episode that we recorded, and I was like, I don't know how I feel about this episode, was the one with Spencer, the Try Not to Laugh one. Same. And then, and then looking back, I'm like, it's so funny, and people loved it. But we did record that like after 6 p.m. That episode and, was and a fever dream. It was such a fever dream. And I remember just being like, what was that? It felt weird. I, I, I just... I foresaw people being like, I don't know. I don't know if I like this vibe. You said small penis 42 times. Yeah, but people. Someone told me. People loved the vibe and they loved us saying small penis over and over again. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> we'll do yeah. a little bit more of that. Yeah, I loved, loved that episode. I don't know what my favorite one was. That's We've had a lot of good ones. We've had so many good ones. They're always good. They're, they're always. I think the Tommy one was really amazing. Which one? Because. Oh, yeah, of the course. The real-life characters? The real-life characters, because Very I was fun. able to really sit and just be fully in entertained by Tommy. Oh, I was just, like, able to just enjoy. I love that there's not too many rules on this podcast, that we have an episode where Tommy just gets to riff about Abby Lee Miller for It was so minutes. exciting. Yeah. Like, I think this podcast, uh, as we develop it even more, is really just about, like... We're just hanging what, out. Well, people are, what's important to people here. Exactly. You know, just us getting to talk about anything that matters to us. Yeah. Yeah, I so, agree. But yeah, and, and this year has been solid. We did start the year with a bunch of resolutions. Or re predictions. Predictions. Um, 
We should go over some, some of them. Some of them come true. Uh, yeah, do you want to pull up yours? Yeah, mine so, is very far-fetched. Uh, not many people may remember the episode, but at the start of this year, our episode, we we made a bunch of predictions. What's funny is we have the episode where we're literally talking about it, and then clearly a lot of people hadn't seen that episode because there were so many, um, so many clips I've seen where people are like, uh, hold on the other side. There you go. Um, where people are like, what's that behind Shane? It's like, we've talked about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you marked off. So Angela marked off because I said there was going to be a smosh. You smosh should mark off another one. Sarah Christ will fall in love with baby. a good guy and hate it. Oh, but yeah. But I remember from uh, Smosh Pit Theater, Sarah Christ and Redacted had that story where they, yep. they fell in love. Hate it, but then love it. Yeah, and I think that was definitely the vibe. Definitely the vibe. And then there was a smosh baby. There was baby Cho. Chosen. Baby Cho. Um, Shane will do a split. No, but you did. But I did a split. You did the split. I told you that, like over the weekend, I finally got down into a split, and That's maybe crazy. maybe one day I'll take a video of it and post it. But it's it was thrilling. That I sounds was like, so cool. I said, Johnny Cage over here. Johnny Cage. Um. So what we can't. Is that? <laughs> Johnny Cage from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, 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 totally. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, so Shane did not do a split, but Amanda did. No. Should I cross off your name and write me? No. No, we'll save it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the splits this year, but I'm trying to stretch. I'm trying. I will say I didn't do it to, I didn't, like, plan to do a split, but the best way I got into a split was holding pigeon pose for a long time and holding frog for a long time. Have you done ever done frog? I think I know. It's like literally opening your hips on the ground. Yeah. I, it's very hard for me to get even close to that. Also, Muay Thai is a ton of hip openers. I'm sure. Um, Angela that's, will that's book the, something. That's my finishing move. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Angela will book something very big. Could happen. Could happen. She's had a big year. She's though. had a big year. That's the thing is like her short film went to Sundance. Like yeah. that's kind of a and big then, booking. And then you guys did a short film. We together. did a short film and we posted about it. Yeah. Um, Patrick and I just filmed a Q&A for that, which I'm cool. super. We had over 200 questions from um, that's awesome. fans asking us about it, which was cool. Um, will well, Smith will come out saying the slap was fake. No. Well, he came out with Bad Boys, a new Bad Boys a movie. A new Bad Boys movie's coming out. I, no. 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 Okay. Anthony will shave his head. That was such a good prediction. I, it still could happen, man. I don't know. I, his hair is so beautiful, and I think that he loves it, too. I, I, but I could see him, Anthony, I could just see him. Really? Well, he's going to need more real estate for tattoos, and uh, <laughs> he's got to shave it and then have that all. I almost like love. I love his hair so much, but but I do see that that could be a possibility. I think it's entirely possible. Okay, Smosh Mouth will gain over a million subs. No, we did. Ha we did have a million over a million views in a week. We have two point four million. Uh, on... Was that in a week? No, that's not in a week. Oh, it's a, no. It's I think that episode's at two point nine. Oh my god! Yeah. And that episode is when you got married. You got married on that episode. Yeah, yeah. People don't realize we actually officially got married in that episode. No, the episode where Courtney and I talk about um, the prank and and getting married. Uh, I by this point maybe has three million views. It's that was really our biggest cool. episode. It was very cool. Um, did very well in a week, but we haven't gained over a million subs. We have gained a lot of subscribers. Yeah, we, we have. have like five hundred and fifty. I'm really grateful for all the people listening. We really. Oh, it's dude, awesome. it's so cool. I will meet Keith Morrison. Keith Morrison from, from Dateline, yeah. I, uh, not happened yet. It hasn't happened yet? We'll make it happen. Well, how? The only way to meet him is to be how? involved in a murder. That's true. Maybe it's maybe it, we should swap it to I will never meet Keith Morrison because that's... Because then well, I... Well, no, yeah. you, if you're meeting Keith Morrison, you, things are okay. Maybe I'll just, you um, just don't cold want, email. You don't want Keith Morrison talking about you. No, I, I no, I do not. No, you don't want him to know who you are unless you're meeting him. Correct. Person. I will cold email him. Um, and finally, you had the JFK Marilyn Monroe truth exposed. What do you think? You think the truth hasn't already been exposed? I thought people I think knew there, that they had an affair. I think there's conspiracy theories. It's not about the affair. It's about who killed her. They think JFK was involved in her death? They think one of the Kennedys was. Whoa. Yeah. Interesting. Because she apparently, this is all conspiracy theories, she apparently had an affair with Bobby Kennedy, too. Oh, wow. The brother. Damn. These files will be released soon. 
I feel like maybe they won't be released soon. I think they might. Didn't um, JFK's wife wrote an autobiography that will get released like in 2070 or 2080 or something, something like right? that? Like a hundred years. There's a lot of secrets. I'm sure, man. I, I wanna, I wanna just believe that that's not what happened, but we still don't know how who killed Marilyn Monroe, or if yeah. it was herself. Poor Marilyn Monroe. Seriously, we we can't even let her rest. I feel so bad for her, man. Me too. She was a really Not good. At, a what's name. sad? You know what's sad? I think of of everything is like she's actually a really great entertainer. She was an and it just gets so overlooked. And she I was such a be- She was such a great actor and entertainer, and all we see her is like a sex symbol. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are mine. So it looks like I only have two. It's still pretty good. Pretty I good. Think, uh, I don't think I have any. Um, and some of mine are pretty um, tame. I would say my first one was I will shake Markiplier's hand. That's all. I will shake Markiplier's hand. I, th- I think that could happen. I know it. I think it could happen too. Still hasn't happened yet. Okay. I mean, as of recording this, maybe it'll happen before this. Keep your this hopes episode. high because it could. Um, <laughs> you know, we just finished all. We just finished FNAF. Like maybe. Yeah, we like, finished he's, that series. He's played all of FNAF too. Maybe he'll hear about it and be like, "Hey, hey, shake your hand. I want to shake your hand. I want to shake your hand." Um, Smosh will be on Good Morning America. I I think we had our opportunity when you didn't know about Harambe for that to yeah, that, that went viral. We Fifteen could have, seconds of fame. You know what we should do? Okay, hear me out. We will put a weather b- balloon up in the air. Oh, and my we'll god. say, oh my god, Shane from Smosh is stuck in that weather balloon, and you're hiding here in the office. And then I'm actually here in the office, and then we'll get on Good Morning America, and then I'll be like, yeah, you told me, you <laughs> told me to say I was in that balloon, and then we're like, shut up, shut up, son. Um. I, 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 similar to Harambe, I wonder if anyone listening has no idea about Falcon. I remember that. Oh, Falcon was the I funniest that. shit it was of all so time. Funny. And why did the parents want want to do that for? Just to go viral. Literally, I think it's truly for fame. Was it money? I think it was for fame. I think truly like clout chasers. Where like was it early again? on? Clout chasers. I don't know where it was. For those of you who, uh, th- to recap this story, yep. it's such a funny story. There was this viral, viral like situation where there was a weather balloon up in the air, yep. and supposedly this little like six Their year, son. five year old kid was in the weather balloon. So Stuck. everyone. Fort Collins, Colorado. Fort Collins, Colorado. So everyone's freaking out. For this day or two, to because try to they're like, oh my god, down. this kid is stuck in this weather balloon. And then, um, I forget what happens. It turns out he wasn't in the weather balloon. They, they, they brought it down. He wasn't in there. And he was actually hiding in his house. He was hiding in his house. So it's like, oh, they all thought he was in there, but he was actually hiding. And so nobody knew where he was. And then they, they this still continues to blow up. They go on Good Morning America. And on, on air, on live TV, this kid blows their cover oh. of like, yeah, you told me to hide. In this room, the parents had planned it. They had told him to hide. They, it was all a big scam just to go viral. So cringy. And um, now I feel like that type of shit happens every day on TikTok. All the time. It's just a common occurrence. But back then, this was like one of the first. This was big. And this it was before was, TikTok. It was nuts. But it was the fact that this kid blew their cover on live TV. <laughs> it was so fucking funny. He's just a kid. Oh, he's just a kid. He has no idea. It's so funny though. Um. It was so good. You could see the dad just be like, um, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, stop. Um, a famous cereal will change their mascot. I felt very confident about this. <laughs> I still feel confident. Like, what if honey, suddenly Honey Smacks is just like, yeah, we have a uh, we have a buffalo now. We killed the Rather frog. Rather than a frog? We killed the frog. Who eats Honey Smacks anymore? Some people eat Honey Smacks. No. Actually, actually, maybe I could argue that I am sort of correct because for... Lately, Reese's Puffs has had Goku on on their box, and I will tell you—is that a guest appearance? I will tell you that marketing has worked on me. I every time I see it, I buy it. You eat cereal at night. At night, you. What are you talking? Eat cereal? Okay, don't don't do this. What's Here's the thing. Cereal? I love cereal, but we can't eat this. We can't eat cereal anymore as adults. Why because not? Because it's very bad for you. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's a dessert. I have it at night as like dessert. How many bowls? One. What do you? What? Don't lie to my How face. How many bowls? You can't just have one bowl of cereal. Everyone yes, knows that. Yes, you can. That's why I don't have it. That's why it's bad for you because you're having five bowls of I it. I have three, and that's not a problem. Holy shit. What cereal are you eating? Uh, corn pops or um, honey bunches of oats. Um, okay. 
Uh, oh, Quaker oatmeal squares. Yum, yum, yum. Okay. I used to be obsessed with grape nuts. Jesus, you love the most boring ones. Well, my mom was crazy. These aren't, those aren't even bad for you. I think those are like the healthy ones. My mom was crazy. She was a health nut, so we weren't allowed to have fun cereal. I like to put granola in a bowl, <laughs> but don't have too many. Or or peanut butter balls, peanut butter puffs. That's whatever the Reese's fuck they're puffs. Called. You've come back. You've come full circle to eating what I eat, and you're making fun of me for it. Well, I'm just saying, I can't believe you're doing you that. <laughs> just were I like, can't. oh well, have you had peanut butter balls, <laughs> Reese's puffs? I can't. Yeah, but I don't do Reese's Puffs. I do like the, like the nicer, like healthier version. The nice. They're probably the same. Hear me out. You know, it's just different. It's marketing. wild that you're eating cereal. I I hadn't in a long time, and then I decided one day I was like, you know what, I'm gonna have some cereal, and I I I went through a bunch of different kinds. I would go to the store and I would be like, I'm gonna get a different cereal this time, just to try them all out. Well, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. Have cereal. You I can, can't. You're allowed to this eat cereal. This body is going to fall apart if I have a bowl of cereal. Okay. It's no different than like having like a dessert of any kind. It's a dessert. I'm not I'm not saying I wake up and I have it in the morning. I'm like, there, I had breakfast. It, I. It's like it, cocaine to me, Shane. If I have it, I go nuts. <laughs> I literally have three full bowls and I cannot stop. I will fill then, up the next then, bowl before And then your dreams at night, the ghost cut, walks up and they're like, oh, shit. And then they leave and you're like, you're like, what's going on? I had my peanut butter balls. I'm ready to go. Get over here. And they're like, come here. Like, no, and you're like, no. come, on, come here. Come here. Um, yeah, that's. Okay. So now you know. All right. I, I love know cereal. not to feed you cereal after midnight. No, like please do. Please do. Uh, I wrote Timothy Chalamet break dances. You missed. Oh, Bigfoot is proven to be real, but went extinct decades ago. Still hasn't happened. And I feel like we keep making headway on aliens. The government keeps releasing more documents on aliens. But they are real. My dad know. told me UFOs you know, are real. The government and the aliens have been talking for years. They've been sharing information for decades, Amanda. Everybody knows this. The government doesn't want people to know. It's very weird why they're covering this up. But aliens and, uh, you know, the government, they're on the same page about this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not kidding. These are normal conversations I have with my dad. Anyways, I'll have a bagel with smear and uh <laughs> He loves bagel with smear. The man he goes The guy at the deli's like, yeah, okay, for sure, man. He goes, girls, I got bagels the size of your head. We're gonna have a great Christmas. That's probably awesome. <laughs> Does is he like a true East Coaster where just it's just one hundred percent it's like the it's layer of cream cheese is the same Yep width as the bagel. And the bagels are the size of your head and I'll show yeah. up with two bags of bagels and extra large Dunkin' Donuts. Fuck. He is a Massachusetts man through and through. That's and awesome. He loves pubs. He loves Irish pubs. That's awesome. Yeah, we got some good friends uh, you know, watching a game at the Irish pub. You know, we're hanging out with them. I'm like, great. That's Fantastic. awesome. That sounds awesome. No, it is awesome. No, the first time I was in New York and I got a bagel with Schmier there, I was like, oh. It's the best thing in the you world. Around, no. but you also need it because you're walking all day. Bagels I was like, are, I need yeah. this energy. Yeah, necessity. If you have that in LA and then you're driving everywhere, S you die. Good night. Um, Cereal. <laughs> yeah. No, I need my Reese's Puffs. <laughs> I also just simultaneously wish we could air just watching an episode of Dragon Ball Z with you. <laughs> it would be so funny. I think you'd love it. I think I've seen an episode of Dragon probably, Ball Z. Probably. Probably. It's just oh box. Timothy Chalamet break dances. Hasn't he? I feel like maybe there's old footage of him. He's just the funniest dude because you watch him in movies and he's the most like sullen, like serious guy, always moping. Yeah. But then in real life, he's just like, "What's up, guys? Yeah. Like, it's me, Timothy Chalamet." Like, I think he's. I think he did on SNL, didn't he? Maybe he. Uh, you know that he had a YouTube channel back in the day, right? He had a YouTube no. channel where he was customizing Xbox controllers. Stop. He would mod Xbox controllers. Yep. And now he's in Dune. And now he's in Dune too. Yeah, he's now he's in every movie. So wait, did he have a big following on his YouTube? Not really. It was just it was. What just was it called? Timothy. Uh, you, you never actually saw his face. It would just be his hands, and he would be showing off Xbox controllers that he modded. Yeah, we'll try to get him on Smosh Games. Yeah, totally. Actually, that'd be so. That would be so freaking fun. funny. What if we got him on darts and we just have him play a character and we don't address who he is? I really, that's my dream is to get the biggest like celebrity on, but not capitalize off of them at all. Like not even have them in the thumbnail. That's actually brilliant. Just have them show up and just. And the, all the comments are, is that Timothy is, Chalamet? Is that fucking Timothy Chalamet there? <laughs> no. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you guys ever heard of Timmy Tim? Timmy Tim? 
What's that? Selena is is bringing up Timmy Tim. Oh, is that the play? It's like the they hip hop. Yes. I have seen this. He did do a hip hop performance. And that's why I felt this prediction, but I was like I think modern day Timothy Chalamet is going to break dance. At some event, I have he's wearing seen a it. backpack in this video. No, I think it makes sense why he's such a good actor is because that dude has zero shame. No, he does not give a fuck, I and I respect that. it. I respect it a lot. Same. Um, I wrote Mario and Luigi kiss officially. I know they're brothers, but maybe it's a Game of Thrones situation. Whoa! I the just... last people who were Mario and Luigi was Anthony and I. So, damn, you had we had the chance. I could have done it. We had the. I should have just, just um, dipped him and then. Oops. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> I should have just dipped him in his Mario costume and, and then kissed him. him. That would have been. Really and then funny. we would have been able to mark that off. And I would have said, "This is for the pod." <laughs> so sad. Amanda books a role as a mom. So, Lady Lady D is a mom. Is basically a mom. She has her three kind of daughters. And look at any commercial I've done in the past. It's already done. There we go. Mark that off. I think we'll mark that off. I feel I like I think we will. Do you need a pen? I feel like um yeah. I, we'll, Lady we'll, D is the wildest mom you've ever had. She's a mom yeah. that lives in like Vegas. We'll, we'll say that. Uh I will do the splits. No, has not happened yet. I don't know if it will. I will be completely Don't say honest. that. I will be completely honest. I had a bunch of goals that I set up for myself at the beginning of the year. People now know that in January when I'm saying all these things that I wanted to try to do this year that I was also in the midst of getting being engaged married. and getting married and also then bef- this was before, but then planning a live show and creative directing. There a live was show. nothing you could get done this year other than I fully lost track of everything these yeah. past few months. Um we haven't have we have an episode that hits a million in a week. That is so, so cool. So um, thank God you didn't do the splits because we wouldn't have that episode that hit a million in a week. I also marked off the one that's not there is the Denver Broncos lose the AFC championship game. No, they lost way before that. Why'd you cross it off so intensely? Because I because I was pissed. Yeah, that seems like an they aggressive. Sucked, they sucked very badly. And then, well, what's, what's sad is that they kind of had a moment where it was like, oh, maybe they can do this. And then they didn't do it. You really um, were upset. It's okay. It's a thick marker. Yeah. All right. Um, well, this is pretty cool. We got some stuff cool. done. This is very cool. Um, yeah, I feel I feel pretty pretty solid. Um, but yeah, I'll keep working on the splits. I know also for some people listening, I was getting really into Taiwanese cooking at the start of the year. That proved to be way too difficult. Mm. That was that was uh, that's a that's, that's okay. a that's a type of cuisine that I can't take on right now. It is really intense okay. there's restaurants also getting the ingredients was really hard and i was like every time i get the ingredients i have to like drive away and find like very specific you markets to research. for it and i was like this is i need to start smaller second job and start like easier recipes and keep doing that i i fell off of cooking in general which is one of my favorite hobbies Aww. but i was very much just like meal prepping cuz i'd get home we were working so hard yeah. for a while that i would get home and i'm like i got to just throw something in an air fryer and like, you'll get you'll get back to it yeah i'm already getting back i made a i made a korean stew last night that was delicious wow yeah hell yeah that's which is actually so easy yummy Korean, the stew, Korean stew is super easy. I kind of fell off cooking too. I actually, so you gifted me a Turkish cookbook. Yeah, yeah. And it was unbelievable. And I cooked probably five meals from that. That's and fast. I was obsessed with it. You can always then set it aside and come back to it. I really want to make the the drinks that they have, like a sumac drink. And they make, a ama- they're, they're non-alcoholic. They're just like these amazing cordials and stuff. Nice. I really want to do that. I, um... That's awesome. That's I yeah, that's really cool. No, I I'm back into the zone of like, oh, I want to try a bunch of new things. I want to cook new things. Yeah. You know a drink that I really want to try that I've never had? What? There's that Indian mango drink. Mango lassi? Yeah. I've Wait, never had it. You haven't? Never had it. It's fucking delicious. I know. I keep hearing about it. It's the like, best thing ever. Like I got to try it sometime. I'll, I know I could easily I'll go buy one I know for I could you. easily go and get it in like the next hour. Yeah. It's just something I haven't gotten around to doing. So Okay, I'll I could get get it for you. <laughs> uh, there's whispers. There's planning. Happening. See, this is my trick. I bring these things. Oh, up here you nightmare! So that the episode ends, and then suddenly mango lasts. You're a appears. nightmare. No. Um, it's I, so good. I've heard it's really good, and it looks incredible. You can kind of sometimes when I make a smoothie. Sometimes I'm like, I just made a mango lassi. That's awesome. It's like yogurt and mango, yeah. and there's other things. Condensed milk, isn't it? 
I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Yeah. But I know it's mango and, and like a dairy. So um, delicious. I I need to take advantage more of of like living in LA, which is arguably one of the best places for food in the world. So much good food. Just because there's every option. I mean, truly, it's like, Ethiopian, oh. Ethiopian, Indian, I've never Taiwanese. Had, I've never had Ethiopian, Ethiopian food. <gasps> and I've always wanted, and it's just something I've never got around to doing. You I just kind it. of, I'm like, oh, I need to do that. It's so delicious. And until you have it, and then. Um, Isn't there little Ethiopia? Yeah. There's so delicious. Little of everything in LA. Oh, baby. <laughs> I love Ethiopian. Where I went to college, there was a bunch of Ethiopian food. That's cool. I know. Oh, shit. Oh. We're at 50 minutes. Oh, so before we get into this next part, guys, we've been doing the podcast for a year, and this is also halfway through this year, and something we do at Smosh around this time, a little peek inside the curtain, is uh, we do mid-year reviews, where we kind of, everyone at Smosh kind of like has either a supervisor or supervisors have their like employees like talk with them and be like, here's what I think you could improve upon. Here's what you're doing great. Like we just kind of all circle up. Yeah. Have a little meetings. Here's what you're doing very bad um, at. But we thought we'd do ours here at the podcast uh -huh. on air. So Selena has worked on reviews of us. She's been working with us for since the start of this. And uh, she's been working behind the scenes. She's been helping us produce, do everything. Um, so she knows about how we operate as professionals, as hosts. <sighs> um, I'm scared. I feel like I'm in high school again. But it feels good and it's necessary. So she's going to sit down with each of us and give us our reviews um, uh, one at a time. Okay, and the other person has to go out and no, the I'll just cap on. The other person will just go and stand off to the side. Okay, who's going first? And laugh. I think you're first. So you're gonna listen to my mid year review? Yeah, dude. Wow. We're a team. We're different. We're a unit. Okay, we're a so unit. So we're all in okay. this together. Um, okay. Are Are you ready? You want? Yeah, I'm ready. Again? Okay, Selena, do you want to hop in? Okay. Get out of here, Shane. Good this, luck. This is my mid year review. Given to me by Selena. Hi, Amanda. Hi. This is very reminiscent. I just want to give a shout out to Lisa. She used to do the mid year reviews and uh, we miss her. RIP. I love No, Lisa. she's not dead. No. <laughs> she's, not, she's not dead. She's RIP. just not here. Um, how are you? I'm good. Okay, good. I'm good. There's nothing to be nervous about. Okay. I'm um, just going to talk about, yeah, okay. go ahead. I think it's that old little kid in me that's like, oh, a review? Yeah. An assessment? Yeah. A meeting? It's like grading. I actually thought about giving you guys like A, B, C oh, you should. markings. Okay. Yeah. I have like five categories. Shane's. Great. Okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, so typically a supervisor would give this. I'm not like, I don't think I'm technically your supervisor, but like we're doing peer reviews here. You're a boss. So, well, okay. Um, anyway, I have five categories. There's performance, okay. attitude, collaboration, communication, and comedy. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Groundlings yeah. all over again. Here we go. <laughs> um, performance is A+. Plus. <gasps> I think you're doing really well. I think you're very engaging on and off camera. Thank so you. So thank you for that. Thank you. For your attitude, also an A+. Plus. Ah! You're a go-getter. You, I barely, there's barely a time when you ever say no to anything. You're always willing to try. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Collaboration, also an A+. Plus. Ah! Hear yeah. that, Shane? Yeah. Yeah. Hear it. Yeah, pretty cool <laughs> shit. Mm. I think, yeah. It goes to show, like, people always want to work with you and are always open uh, open to talking to you. Okay. So I think that says it for itself. That's great. Um, communication, you. also A-plus. You're always the first one to reply to my emails and anything that I ask about and are just perfect. I am perfect. Are you guys yeah. listening to this? Yeah. I love responding to emails. If, I, if my e inbox fills up, I get so overwhelmed. So I'm like, hello? Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I'm the same way. Yeah. And um, comedy, I would say also A plus. Oh my I god! Think so funny, Jane. Good luck. Amanda's <laughs> so funny. Thank but yeah, you, I actually don't. Li literally, I have nothing written <laughs> for Amanda. This is stakes all stakes are high. This is all coming from the heart, and I mean every word of it. Thank you. Yeah, that's so You're sweet. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah. How How have you been feeling? Good. Yeah. I'm feeling really good. I'm very grateful that you are on this too. Um, not that I don't love Shane, you know, I, I do. Um <laughs> I love him so much. 
But like sometimes it's Shane and I are like, okay, it's so nice to have someone to help us like organize, yeah. get everything together. Yeah, you guys so have I'm the really ideas. Glad. I just got to make sure that the puzzle pieces work. Yeah, you know? I'm grateful for yeah. you. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. How's the experience on the pod? And and how's how's Shane? How's working with Shane? Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. <laughs> working with Shane is the best. It really is. I love working with Shane. I really do. Wow. Shane feels like family to me right now. Yep. You're I feel like I can. Cry. I feel like I can bring up anything to him, and he's like, oh, okay. He's not like, ah, no, okay. We can't we can't talk about that right now. That is so wow. Yep. Nice Shane. I love my partner. Wow. Yeah. See? Also, Collaborative. He's right there. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Collaborative, supportive. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. Wow, I feel good. Yeah. Can I go home now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Shane's turn here. It's Let's Shane's do. turn? Yeah. Shane good luck, Shane. Also has to get reviewed. Best of luck, buddy. <laughs> She's tough. <sighs> Okay, What's up, Shane? coach? How are you doing? This is like in Hard Knocks when someone's going to get cut. <laughs> it's like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> How are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Selena? I'm good. You ready for this? Yeah, I overheard through the door how Amanda's was going. It was sounding sounding tough. Through the door? Okay. Yeah, through the door. I was right outside. Um, yeah, it sounded brutal. Okay. So. so for you, I actually have something written down, but we're going to go over okay. All the five categories. It'll be encompassed in the in the review. Got it. Got okay. It. Ready. Ready. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's go. It, it's gonna be fine. Okay. Yeah. It'll be fine. Yes. Cool. <laughs> Great. Ready. So it starts out. Shane is an impeccable coworker. That's pretty good. Okay. Um. No. Uh. Actually, it says Shane is an insufferable coworker. Got it. He's constantly screaming, uh -huh. disrupting the peace of the office, and sure. hiding behind everyone during their lunch break when they're supposed to not be working. All for your stupid little "Where's Waldo" wannabe photos. Oh my God. Okay. okay. Uh, Some of those were Tommy's idea. So. Uh, well, okay. I I see the collaboration. I see the collaboration, but uh, okay. we got to talk about respecting people's boundaries. There. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah, what what are you hiding from when you do that, or what uh, are you hiding? Oh, like what's in that little tote bag of yours that you're always lugging around? I never actually have seen you pull anything out of it. I have, um, I have yeah, knickknacks and oh. silly things and treats. Okay. Um, I want a treat. Right, I want it. I've never. I have it. my Goku Reese's Puffs in my tote bag. Um, but I do have to applaud you for taking initiative and being proactive and cuffing your own jeans so that Josie can go and do other things other than <laughs> hem your pants. Holy shit. <laughs> now she has more time to do other things. <laughs> yeah. And I know you've been acting since you were a teenager, yeah. but it boggles the mind that you can't get your act together. Like, can you answer Ooh. your emails? Like, I fully believe this is the reason why it took you 10 years to get your degree. They were probably just waiting for an email. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Also, you're not funny. And also, you broke my fidget toy, you stupid bitch. I did break your fidget toy. I will fully take responsibility for that. I broke it, and I ordered a new one right on the spot because I knew that was fully on me. Well, before that, he came to my desk and was like, whoa, this is cool, and started playing with it, and it, he immediately <laughs> dropped it <laughs> on the ground. It was like one of those things that you spin, and it like... It, it like was so spinning. cute. And I literally go like, awesome! And I go like, Froom! and I just like launched it like 10 feet, and it just busted. I was like, and I turn, and I go, I am so sorry, I will get you a new one. <laughs> That's not what happened. I had to ask, I had to beg for it. That is not true. <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> I had to beg for it. The comments will, will decide who's telling the truth. Yeah. And yeah, that's the end of your review. Wow. So there was no grades on there. Oh. Um, uh, you. I heard the A pluses. Um. <laughs> you know what? Don't tell me. No, I don't think you want to <laughs> know. Don't tell me, Selena. Um, thank you, Selena. Yeah. Uh, you have been wonderful. Thank you. It's, even after that? That's Even crazy. after that. No, this is very funny. Uh, cool. it, it shows you really help out with the comedy of this podcast. Awesome. And so uh, we, we've formed know. a great team. Yeah. No, actually, part of it is um, I've learned a lot about you and about Amanda, but I'm very 
I actually find myself very similar to you. Really? I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's similar to me how? Like, I also eat cereal at night. I also eat Reese's Puffs. Have you had the mini version? They have like I the don't, smaller the mini version. versions don't seem interesting to me. N- the mouthfeel. It really? adds to it. Yeah. See, I like I like the size of Reese's Puffs. Okay, but it doesn't if you eat enough of it, it scratches the top of your mouth and this mini ones doesn't do that. Hmm. Okay. I, I really want you to try it. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll give them a shot. I might and I'll it. let you know. Yeah, I'll bump your grade up if you do it. Okay. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> All I have to do is eat Reese's Puffs and then I get a better grade. Yeah. Easy. Easiest thing in my life. Yeah. Well, um, thank you, Selena. Yeah. I'm sorry that you're so similar to me. Yeah. That sucks. I got to work on that. <laughs> you got to stop eating cereal, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, Amanda, you can hop back on here. Wow. Wow. Selena, everyone. <laughs> How do you guys? Thanks, Selena. Yeah. How, how'd yours go? Um, really, really good. Yeah. Mine went great. Did it? Yeah, it was so good. I'm so glad because I was no, worried. Yeah, but what grades did did she give you grades? She, like, yeah, I got grades. Yeah, same. Yeah, you got grades. Same. Yeah, yeah. What'd what, you What'd you What'd get? you get? Uh, I probably yeah. It's like you know, like the like probably like the basic thing. Like what? Like an A plus. Yeah, like an A plus. Oh, that's the basic. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like that's probably what she was giving everybody. So. Oh damn! I thought I was like with honors. Oh no, no, you probably are. Yeah. I just think like, but that's why I, I got probably like an A. Like an a. she was um screaming, um, you know, yeah. to herself when she left your meeting. So I just didn't know if it was good or. I yeah, I don't know. She probably got like a text. Cause she kept she... saying like, "I don't want to be like him." Yeah. Oh, over and she, over and over. She's quoting a movie. We're, oh, really? Yeah, I don't want to be like him. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. She never talked to me about movies. I guess we're not that close. Guess not. No, she said that she and I are exactly alike. So I guess if, I guess since we're exactly alike, if she gave me a bad grade, then she would also be getting a bad grade, you know? Like, but I thought you said you got the basic but grade. But I, I got a good grade, so it's like, it's all fine. Yay. So you're going to move to the next level? Yeah, I know for sure. I'm going to move to Superhost next. There, I'm going to get a promotion. Oh, good. Superhost. I was so worried because they yeah, mentioned yeah. like I would get a replacement, but I, I'm not. Right. I don't think that's in the books. Yeah, probably not. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, I'm so happy for us. Me too. Um, okay, actually, truthfully, Amanda, you have you have crushed it this past year. This has been <laughs> so dope. Um, it's it's really cool. It's it's really been awesome. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, I feel like fans have also really gotten to know me, know you through yeah. this because you've been around for so long. But like, I've been around for so long, but there's never really an opportunity to actually talk and like get to know me. And I do feel such a shift. Yeah, when I post or when I'm in videos, like I actually feel like I'm coming with like this knowing. Like, it's such a scary thing to to kind of just be a little more genuine on here because you're like it doesn't feel entertaining yeah doing it and then people but people's response has been and it's i can't tell people the amount of times where we put out something where i'm like oh, this isn't good this is entertaining and then they they they're like this is incredible i loved listening to this and i'm like oh and so it's it's such a challenge then because i'm like i can't go always with what I think is the most like what, yeah. what people want, but it's but it's also nice because this is easier and and the more we it's relatable, it's easy and fun for us is what people are I liking. Mean, to be honest, if I if my people that I loved on a show had a podcast and I could listen to their daily thoughts and like yeah. what they were doing or try things out, I would be psyched. It's yeah, you're so right, but you know? it's it's tough because we become entertainers I think in some ways because we I mean at least uh, speaking yeah. to myself out of like an insecurity of like yeah. oh, my regular just being myself isn't enough. I need to be entertaining. I need Absolutely. to do stuff. So to pull that back a little bit more and still be enough is even is even trippy. harder. It's trippy and it's even harder, but yeah. we've been doing it for a year. I know, it's really wild. And it's kind of scary. I will say, doing the first ten episodes, I would go home and go. I said too much. I revealed too yeah. much. Now everyone knows too much, and I'm starting to learn like it is okay to share what's going on because you never know someone that you are connecting with that is also like I have that too, and I never know when to talk about it. And honestly, mundane things are entertaining to talk about. Yeah, for people, you can talk about Reese's Puffs for a whole hour. And people will probably be super into it. Okay, I was thinking Crackling Oat Bran. 
Okay. Big one. Still not surprised. Still not surprised. Big one. See, that those are delicious. those are the brands you're doing. See, meanwhile, when I was going through my cycle of cereals, it was it was Reese's Puffs, Frosted Flakes, uh, Honeycombs. <gasps> honeycombs. Honeycombs are delicious. So good. The best still, I think, is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Cinnamon Toast Crunch is it's, delicious. It's unbelievable, so but it good. is loaded with sugar. Yeah. It's just stupid. I just don't like the soggy ones. Like Fruity Pebbles can f off. Frosted Flakes. I, I can thought Fruity off. Pebbles. I will say Fruity Pebbles. I thought were super overrated. Yeah, and Tricks. Or not Fruity Pebbles. I'm sorry, I'm get it wrong. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops super overrated. Fruity Pebbles incredible. Cocoa Pebbles are are so delicious, but they are basically a joke. No. You might as well eat a candy bar. Yeah. That is just pure sugar nope. and chocolate, but it is unbelievably delicious. Have you ever had Cracklin' Oat Bran? Probably. Those are the ones that my mom had growing up. Yeah, me too. And it was just Still like doing lame. It. I'm gonna buy cereal. Cashy Goleen did this. Crunch. I'm like, get it out of here. My mom had that too. Goleen yeah, Crunch. Hate, hate that. Was stuff. the thing. I hate it. And it tasted like styrofoam. Yeah, I think it might be. And grape nuts. When you oh. ate grape nuts, you literally shit pellets. <laughs> it turns you into a deer. Yep. Uh, turns out it's pretty cool. Um, well. <laughs> Awesome. On that note, um, thank you guys for celebrating our one-year anniversary yeah. of the pod. And thank you, Selena, for the reviews. I'm so glad we both got good reviews. Yes. Perfect reviews. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. See you later. Bye. 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 <laughs>